Good morning students. This is Murthy sir. In the last class we discussed about variations in organisms, introduction to taxonomy and binomial nomenclature by Carolus Linnaeus. Students, today you will learn some more examples of classification of living organisms based on hierarchy. Students, hierarchical classification is a system of grouping things according to a hierarchy or levels or orders. The categorization of species is another example of hierarchical classification. At the very top is the kingdom which is the broadest category followed by phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Students, based on hierarchical classification, here you can see two examples from animal kingdom. The first one is wolf, a mammal. Honeybee is an insect. It is an invertebrate. It belongs to phylum Arthropoda. Students, now let us see two plant examples. The first one is wheat. The scientific name of wheat is Triticum aestivum. In plant classification, instead of category phylum, division is used. The second example is mango. The scientific name of mango is Mangifera indica. So here, for both examples, you can see hierarchical classification. Students, now let us learn about the significance of classification of living organisms. It gives a better knowledge and understanding of organisms under study. It helps to study the organisms in a proper and systematic manner. The classification helps to make comparison in an easier way. The classification helps in understanding the relationship among the organisms and their interdependence. Classification makes our study more focused and helps us to handle huge population of organisms. The classification gives us an idea of evolution, how organisms have evolved in the course of millions of years. Students, now let us see different classifications done by great taxonomists. The first one you can see extreme left. The classification given by Carolus Linnaeus, the pioneer of taxonomy. And the most significant one is Whitaker's Five Kingdom classification, Robert Whitaker, who proposed Five Kingdom classification. Students, in the Five Kingdom classification proposed by Robert Whitaker, the first kingdom is Monira. Second one, protista. Third one, fungi. The fourth one, plantae. And the fifth one, animalia. In this picture, you can see great taxonomist Robert Whitaker and the flowchart of Five Kingdom classification proposed by Robert Whitaker. In Whitaker's classification, the first kingdom is Monira. Monira represents primitive organisms. They are unicellular organisms. These cells do not contain a well-developed nucleus. They reproduce by splitting into two, that is binary fission. They absorb nutrients from outside their bodies. Some Monirans are parasitic in nature and some are helpful. Examples are bacteria, anabina. Anabina is cyanobacteria. You know that bacteria are prokaryotic organisms. In bacteria, the cytoplasm contains genetic material but no nuclear membrane. In Whitaker's classification, the second kingdom is protista. Protista represents unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium. The second kingdom protista consists of mainly unicellular organisms but some forms are multicellular. These are heterotrophic organisms and these organisms contain a nucleus with a membrane. You already learned that amoeba acquires food 
through endocytosis. It contains a food vacuole to digest food particles and to eliminate waste material, it contains contractile vacuole. Amoeba undergoes reproduction through binary fission. The third kingdom in Whitaker's classification is fungi, fungi or heterotrophic organisms. Fungi or eukaryotic organisms, they are saprophytic in nature. Their cell wall is made up of chitin. Some of them live in close relationship with certain algae and these are called lichens. Some of them have the ability of being multicellular. Examples for fungi are yeast, mushrooms, rhizopus, common name is bread mold. Some fungal forms are parasitic in nature. 